This meeting of the City of Richard Spring City Council will come to order. Madam Clerk, would you please establish a quorum, please? Parker Raphael. Here. Karen Lindblad. Here. Butch Berry. Present. Lanny Balance. I'm here. James DeVito. Absent with notice. Ken Pownall. Here. We have five. All right, thank you. Uh, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Next to be approval of the agenda. Motion to discuss. Huh? So moved. Second. Second. Made and seconded. Floor is open. Any additions, deletions? Changes for the approval of the agenda, yes. Mr. Pano. Uh I guess it would be under unfinished discussion of the deer hunt. Okay. Second. It would be number nine. Deer hunt. Ms. Lindley. Um, I'd like to put on the uh, voting by ward, but I don't know if it would come under old or new business at this point. It's been on once before, so I guess it'd be under old business. Second. Was it discussed at all this time? Yes, we did. it was, and it was deferred. Mm -hmm. You want it on the next agenda? This one. This one? On this one. It would be number 10, then. Business number four, I'd like to add a discussion of the Electric Trolley Association correspondence. Second. Number four? You mean number six? We've got five. This one I got is three new business. You're missing somebody, yeah. Do you have an extra agenda? Six, Ken has, doesn't have a right agenda. There you go. This would be number okay, six. Now? Number six under unfinished? New business. New business. Okay. Second. favor of the amended agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Again, okay. Uh, next will be approval of the minutes for August 13th, 2012. Motion to discuss. So moved. Okay. Made and seconded. Any additions, deletions, changes? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> On page three, it would be under number seven, Vine Street Vacation slash Ordinances. If we come down to uh, quite a way down the page, um, we have motion failed 300 with Mr. Pawnell, Ms. Lindblad, and Ms. Balance voting no. That should probably be 330. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further? And on the next page, under unfinished business, number nine, should be update from. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay. Motion to accept amends is approved and amended. Amends so moved. I'll Second. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. And it's approved. Next will be Commission Committee Authority Reports and Expired Terms. Beverly, you're on deck. Oh, you're actually at the bat. Um, I have your, uh, from the Planning Commission, I wanted to let you know that on October the 9th, we will have a 
public hearing for a conditional use permit at 5 Summit Street. And um, the last time I let you know about conditional use permit hearing or public hearing, um, I got some phone calls about how come this is coming up so much. I don't know if y'all were always kept in the loop before, but um, at the beginning of this year, we did a thorough um, look through of all the CUPs that had been issued, and there were a little over 50 of those that had lapsed and have been since revoked. So the list of CUPs that we actually have on the books now is a lot smaller than it ever was before, and some of these hearings um, are people that are just adding on to their businesses, but it's important that I let you know and let the public know because if this is in their neighborhood, then it, this is the only time they get to speak, and they do get a letter about it. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you, um, I know your last agenda, I mean your last meeting got cut short at the end and you didn't get to put on, um, I had asked if you would please put to your next agenda uh, city Code 44801 about sales and festivals. If you would please add that on to your next agenda at the end of your meeting. Um, and on your agenda today, on number four for the Planning Commission, it says building permits, parking lots, demolition, and construction. I know that you did receive an ordinance from the uh, city attorney. Um, but the reason that we asked you to hold off on that was because the building inspector and myself had some revisions to that ordinance, and it still has not, Tim can't look at it yet, <clears throat> and I didn't go read it to him yet. So um, if you could please um, just postpone that also because there were some revisions sent and you don't have that. Um, Number five, under unfinished business, is the weekly dwelling units list. Again, you're waiting for the city attorney to actually write an ordinance for that. Um, that's not been written. Um, but I do have the list of folks that have received their business license and paid their CAPC taxes that we believe is going to have to go with that. If you would like to each have one of those just so that you'll know, it, it might not be in that order when you get it back with the ordinance, but we have um, listed that two or three times at the Planning Commission. We've given it to the public, so we believe that that is everyone. Um, I think that's it. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask you, what is the status of the uh, zoning maps that we approved quite a while back? Mm -hmm. Do you um, well, y'all did approve in the budget money for a new zoning map, and I will say that never did I think at the beginning of September of this year would that project not be completed. But if you will just allow me another couple of weeks, I could bring you the update of that probably at your next meeting. Any further? I'd yes. like to request that that goes on the agenda for the next meeting, an update on the uh, zoning maps. So you can put that on when we get to a change setting, if you want to do that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to go ahead and address the issue now of uh, <coughs> postponing four and five under unfinished? Mr. Pano. I'll just suspend the rules and postpone four and five under unfinished business until the next file. Provisions and the ordinance have been written. A second? Second. Made and seconded. And we'll need to do a roll call since this is suspension under the rules. Oh, no. Yes. Mr. Berry. Yes. Ms. Balance. Yes. Ms. Lindblad. Yes. Mr. Raphael. Yes. Five zero zero. Thank you. All right. That was four, four and five, both at the same time. Okay. 
Okay, that moves us on to number, s I'm sorry, brings us back up to CAPC, where we have a vote pending on Mr. Robert Schmidt for, I believe, position number one. Move to uh, approve Robert Schmidt for position one on CAPC. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Everybody get a chance to talk to him? Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. 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 One four zero. Next will be the reapplication of a renewal of Mr. Lynn Bridwell for position number three. He is expired on six thirty eleven. Move to approve uh, Lynn Bridwell for <coughs> position three in CAPC. Second. Discussion? Yes, sir. Have, have we got an application on here? Uh -uh. We should have one. I didn't I've one. seen one, and it doesn't show that we're voting. Uh -uh. should have one in your box. He's, this application's been in here for six weeks, two months, quite a while. Yes, ma'am. Well, it might have, but it didn't show. I, I don't have a copy of that that I know of, and it didn't show on our agenda that we were going to be voting on her. So um, so I I don't feel like I can vote on her because I would have it's called him. her had I known. Mr. Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, I would have. Uh, if I'd known, I would have called him. But, no, it wasn't on here that we were going to be voting on him. So. Is it necessary to renominate on a renewal? They would carry over until they're replaced, but okay. uh, he's still on there and has been. I move to defer to next week or next meeting. Second. Main seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. <laughs> next will be the hospital commission. There will be a vote on Dr. Jack Pritchard. <coughs> I think this is the third third time it's been before the board, before the council. Move to approve Jack Pritchard for the hospital board position Second. five. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Stay. Okay. One, three, one. That is a fail. No. Correct. Yeah. Guys, we run out of people to put on these things. Well, he's still on the commission, so. Nothing under parks, nothing under HTC, nothing under cemetery, yellow bag, research. Yes, sir. Uh, my copy, I didn't have the up to date agenda. It shows Gloria Stevens expired 215.12. Is there a reason that's on there? Let her explain it. The website hadn't been updated when this agenda went out, <clears throat> and I realized looking at it yesterday that it, she's plugged in, so you can scratch out vacant, putting Gloria. What's her expiration date? Uh, I Part believe they're three year terms, so that'd be <laughs> 2 15 15. Is she in position two? <clears throat> oh, she's not even on mine. Okay. Yeah, I think we did her on June the 25th. He approved her. She oh, was approved. all right. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this will be Yellow Bag Research Committee. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I need to... I forgot one for Parks. My bad. I have a nomination of a Rachel Bree. B R I X, and I'm assuming I spelled it and said that correctly. Is that it's correct? Bricks. Bricks, okay. Rachel Bricks, she has applied for Parks Commission. And you should have a copy of her uh, application and resume in your paperwork. So, I nominate her. Uh, let's see. 
It's going to be one or five. I'm not sure which one it is. She put in the new uh, Dog Grimmy shop down on North Main, right across from uh, in the old cleaners building, right next to across from Santa Fe, on Santa Fe Place. Doesn't have a position. It's just not on here. So it's one or five. This will be one or the other. <clears throat> I'm sorry. This will be one or the other. Say so, whatever. I don't know which one it is. I can't answer that question. She didn't put it on here. You're, you're making the nomination. I guess we just one nominator then. It's either one of them, so you can at least consider it for one and or the other, then I'll give you the position number next time. It's not that big a deal, is it? She's the only one applying for either one of them. So move on. Public comments. Yellow bag. Oh, the yellow bag. Since there's nothing on the agenda, Ms. Balance, do you want to uh, give a report the yellow bag right now? I expect to have one ready for next meeting. Okay. Any questions? Discussion? Just to beat the deer hunt, it was added to. Number nine, under unfinished business. <coughs> okay, next to public comments. First one up is Jean Grinnell. Jan Grinnell. I live at 50 Joe, 50 Joe Street, which is located on the upper historic loop right on the loop. I'm here to ask y'all to search in your mind and your heart and see if you really have done your due diligence in regards to the deer hunt. I picked up the list of property owners that are offering their property for the hunt. The list includes addresses. It does not include locations. One person will list various locations. There is not one person in Eureka Springs that knows where this deer hunt is going to occur. Not one. <sighs> scares the life out of me. Uh, I don't feel this council has taken into account our health, our safety, and our welfare. I have an acre and a half. School kids like to take an adventure and get off the sidewalk and cut through my holler. My property is going to back up to one of the hunting grounds. The hunting grounds are not going to be marked, so the deer hunters have no idea where to start and where to finish unless the property owners that don't want to be hunted on go out and go down into the tick infested woods where the Lyme disease breeds and marks their trees in purple and their property lines in purple. It's the responsibility of the people that don't want deer hunters on their property to mark the property. The, my opinion, this is crazy. We have to have a map showing everywhere the deer hunt will occur. There are tourists, there are children, there's grown-ups. I can't let my dog on my acre and a half out to play for four months. Um, 
I sent each and every one of you an email before your last meeting. If you did not receive that email, please get in touch with Diane. I've talked to some of you, um, but it appears that some emails are not getting to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Greg Moon. Greg, you're up. Hello, my name is Gregory Moon. I live at Number Two Prospect, and I'm not going to take up a lot of your time because Ms. Grinnell just said everything I needed to say. I, I live right there. We're going to have the deer hunt also, and same thing. What she said about the kids it happens right by my house also. They cut through the woods. All kinds of things could happen during this hunt. It's not safe. I think it should be outside the city limits, as it goes on every day outside the city limits. We hear the gunshots every day, especially in the fall. So I don't feel any needs that should be in the city limits. And a lot of your voters don't think so either. So keep that in mind. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thanks, sir. Melissa Green. Hi, Melissa. Hi. That too tall for you? You don't want to hear me anyway. Hi, Melissa Green, 17 Bridge. Um, I talked to a council person today, and they said that they were going to discuss a procedure to maybe put the deer hunt back on the ballot. And I will respectfully ask that you consider it and think about it. And that doesn't mean that people are going to vote not to have it. They might come out in groves and vote to have it. But I think a lot of us feel we were misled, and we came to the voting box and were handed something different. And like I said, it doesn't mean that it still might you know, be voted through. But I think knowing what we know now, I would feel better when I went to the voting box to make a better decision. I respectfully ask you to consider it, and thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The in public comments. Next on the agenda is unfinished business. Number one, it's been postponed. Number two, ordinance 2155, the limo ordinance will be on its second or third reading. Second. Yeah, second reading, yeah. No, second reading. For second? Second. Main second. Floor is open for discussion. Mr. Raphael. Yes, I think we've had this here a long time, and, and we, I'd really like to move along on this. Uh, but when we started out, we wanted to define the difference between uh, taxi and limousine. I think we've done an okay job of defining it, but we also need enforceability. When we moved it back to one hour, we basically what we did is change it from a $5 limousine ride to a $7.50 limousine ride. And I would like to uh, move to amend this ordinance and put it back to two-hour minimum. It's a motion. Second. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Yes, ma'am. Well, it seems to me that from reading other, from other cities, um, this is a good move because... Um, you know, the ta this is not a taxi, it's a limo service. And to provide a good limo service, I think it's a very necessary thing that it be put back to two hours rather than one. Any further? Okay. The motion is, um, yes, Mr. Pano. Uh, I apologize that I wasn't here at the last meeting, but uh, there's been so many changes uh, since we've read 2155. I <clears throat> I'm really at a loss to know whether or not we have a whole ordinance as mm -hmm. written. Um, where, where do we stand as far as continuing with the second reading with it being amended from the city attorney's standpoint? At this point, what you're uh, apparently going to vote on is the motion to amend it. I think you have a whole ordinance minus the amendment. If you approve the amendment, that amendment needs to be added to it. If you don't approve it, of course, then it won't affect the body of the remainder of the document. Any further? Would you leave it? Well, I would like to mention that 
the original ordinance did have two hours listed, and all I did is go in and gear it back to one hour. So it, there haven't been significant changes to the text. Good. To reread the motion, please. Uh, Mr. Raphael moved to amend and put it back to two hours. That's the motion. There has been a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed like sign? No. Motion carried. <coughs> Four one zero. Okay. Correct. Right. And, uh, excuse me. Go ahead. This section, in section three, where it says limousine shall be rented not at not less than seventy-five dollars per hour with a one-hour minimum, rentals in excess of one hour. That sentence would have to be adjusted also, and that's all. That should be taken care of under under that same motion. Anything mm -hmm. that was one hour goes to two. Would that cover it, Mr. Weaver? Yes, it should. Okay. Okay. The vote was still four one zero. Correct. What? We don't need another motion to change to change B. No, he said no. it was, it was good. cover it. Okay. Yeah. Everything was one goes to two. Ms. <coughs> Bellant. So how will that paragraph read now, please? Go ahead and read it like it should be. Read. Something about the second sentence. I almost want to go down and find the other one. Rentals in excess of two hours. There's something about the second sentence, Tim. Do we remember rentals in excess of two hours shall be at a rate of not less than? It was left, I believe, to them for discretion. I don't remember for sure. I'm really not comfortable without the second sentence. There's something about it. Rentals in excess of two hours shall be at a rate of not less than... $60. Well, 60 is what's here, and I believe that's what it said, but I'm 1% unsure. Council want to do? Yes, ma'am. I can live with the sixty dollars an hour. Okay. So this is the second reading. <coughs> You've got one more reading for you. <coughs> Finalize it. You need to make any change, I guess you can do it next time. But that was a motion to change everything from one hour to two hours. And the other part, I'm I'm not sure what, what you're trying to clarify. Just how the second sentence would read. And yes, we can go ahead with it, none of it's not correct. Modify it. Okay. Any further? Ms. <coughs> Balance. Could I, could I please, could I please now hear what that, uh, what that paragraph, how that paragraph will read? Limousine shall be rented at not less than $75 an hour with a two hour minimum. Rentals in excess of two hours shall be at a rate of not less than $60 an hour. Thank you. Further? Okay. 
That was the original motion and vote. Yeah. Anything else on it? That was the second. This will be the second reading. Move to suspend the rules and place uh, ordinance number 2155 <coughs> on a second reading by title only. Second. second. Is that a roll call or? Yes. Okay. Roll call. Ms. Lindblad? Yes. Ms. Balance? Yes. Mr. Raphael? Yes. Mr. Berry? Yes. Mr. Pano? Yes. 5 0. <coughs> ordinance number 2155, an ordinance regulating operation and rates with regard to certain for hire vehicles. Move to approve 2155 for a second on the second reading. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any further? If not, we'll move on. Okay. Number three has been postponed. Four and five postponed. Taxi workshop update. Taxi franchise workshop update. Motion to discuss. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Main second. 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 Floor is open. We haven't had one. We haven't had one. Okay. Another one. I think the city clerk has an update on it. Oh. Uh, most folks wanted to wait until after Labor Day, and it's looking like, at this point, it would probably be Wednesday 9-5 or Thursday 9-6, if the budget workshop doesn't change that. Yes, ma'am. What time are we talking about? 6 p.m. Oh, right. Further? Okay. You want to pick one of those now? Whatever's convenient for the council. Yes, ma'am. I'd prefer Thursday. Thursday? Anybody else? Thursday? <coughs> All in favor of Thursday, say aye. <laughs> That's the easiest way, yeah. Just still checking. Okay. Book's checking his. Oh. I'm fine. You good? Yeah. Okay. I guess we're good with Thursday then. What time? Thursday the 6th. Thursday the 6th. 6 o'clock. 9, 6, 12. Okay. Yeah, sure. This panel? This. Okay. What, time? what was the time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay. <coughs> okay. Nothing else on that one. Moving to number seven, auditorium agreement for 2013. Discuss. Second. Main Floor is open. Postpone to the next meeting because Mr. Dean is absent. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Postpone to the next meeting. Number eight is the Conway Spring marker. Move to discuss. Second. Madam Secretary, floor is open. Yes, ma'am. Um, do we have a, a picture of this marker or anything yet? Is there any kind of uh, anything for us to review, to have a look at? Mr. Berry? I'm not sure we're even supposed to be reviewing this. I think the question is who's in charge of it, isn't it? I believe that's the question. And we don't have any pictures of it. I think the last discussion was the fact that who, who had the jurisdiction? City over real property or parks over park property? Yes, ma'am. After having read the statutes extensively and forming my own opinions, which I know everybody has, and some people are not going to agree with me, but it is the parks are city property and state statute does say that the city council shall have control and control of all city property so i just i don't think we're going to have any problem with it but i and i do think it was is within 
the city council's purview to approve permanent structures that are to be added to city property. So I, I, I stand on that. Mr. Bear. Mr. Mayor, we've gone through this you know, a year and a half ago. We've got numerous discussions. We've got our city attorney here now, I think in the past. We also said that um, it's the Parks Commission is autonomous. They have control over it according to state statutes. Uh, you know, I don't know why we're even talking about this. Uh, if we're looking at that ordinance, it's almost going back, and that's what I facetiously said. We need to review the cemetery then because of all those permanent markers. You know, we're trying to micromanage this. I don't think we want to come up with everything up here. This is what the parks is for. And again, even David Schoen said that, you know, that it's within, um, as long as the ordinance remains in effect, the council may not interfere with the commission's authority to commence new capital improvements. Now, this was on the capital improvements issue, but it's the same thing. Um, and he is an attorney. Uh, and so I think we do have, if the council wants to take that authority back away from the parks and they can disband the parks commission and take and do it in that manner. Otherwise, we just need to go ahead and leave it alone. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, when <clears throat> new monuments are erected at the cemetery, people have actually bought those plots. So they actually belong to whoever bought them. Yeah, I mean, it's still the city cemetery, and it's kind of like a condo-type deal. They buy it, and we kind of like take care of it. So it's, that's actually apples and oranges. Um, if, indeed, the parks were totally autonomous, then when we had the recent Vine Street vacation, the parks department should have been able to vacate that on their own. But since they are not totally autonomous, the parks had to agree to let the city take back that property so it could be vacated. So truly, they do not. They're not autonomous. They don't have the final word on public property. That property came back to the city council so that we could have the final word on it because we are the elected body. Now, since Parks is thinking about putting some per a permanent structure in the, in the form of a marker on public property, it's my opinion that city council should have the final say on it. I don't think we'll have a problem with it. It's probably quite lovely, and it's probably quite appropriate. Still, the bottom line is that is the city's property, and this is the elected body representing the city. Therefore, it's my opinion that we should have the final say. It is the city property. We are the elected officials. We are not a commission. We are not appointed. We are the elected body. That property belongs to this city. We are the city fathers and mothers. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Weaver, you got any input on this one? Uh, looking at this, I think that uh, Mr. Barry's point a moment ago about the cemetery is not as far off the mark as what misbalance would necessarily say uh, and I'm not just because of the purchase but the cemetery commission maintains that same cemetery and they do so under the authority of the city that's granted to them through the commission creation and an issue that has come up in a lot of cemeteries over markers is how uh, those markers uh, how, what size they can be whether they have to be flush with the ground whether they can mark all four corners of a plot those are all issues that would normally be handled by the commission. And that doesn't have anything to do with the ownership of the actual potential plot. It has to do with the commission and its operation of the maintenance of the grounds. Same thing you're talking about here. You're talking about a small plot. You're not talking about a 40-story building. The commission does not have the authority, or commissions do not have the authority to sell or convey that property without your approval, but to restrict every commission in town every time they want to put up a small improvement an oak tree that's going to last 200 years potentially is of the same nature as a monument are you every time they're going to plant a tree or a bush that may last where do we draw the line a bush lasts 25 years maybe or 30 years in the cemetery do you have to approve every bush 
if the trolley people want to move one of their trolley markers uh, for a particular stop, are you going to approve every one of those? You don't. You haven't. You approve the elimination of a stop, potentially. But if they want to move it five feet over, are you going to bring it to this table? I think you're trying to micromanage beyond what the state statute actually allows you to do in a normal situation. And as Mr. Barry said, if you really want to do that, eliminate your commissions if you don't trust them. And you can have 40-hour meetings a week. Some cities have full-time city councils. Maybe you need a full-time city council that manages every aspect of everything that's now managed by a commission. But that, that is where you where are you going to draw the line? How, how small of an object are you going to let one of your commissions handle without you uh, stepping in? So is there a line? Where, where is the line in your opinion? The way I see it, the state statute draws the line at conveying the property. If you sell it or you place a lien against it, that's where you really have the authority as the council that only you can do. So in your opinion, the council has no right to say what happens to the property other than if it's going to be given away or sold. That's it. If, if they want to build a structure on it and they need a loan, certainly that has to be approved by you because that's conveying an interest in the property, at least temporarily, through a mortgage. But so where, where they want to put up a tree or put up a small marker or they want to put up a new jungle gym in one of the uh, parks, I think you're really trying to micromanage if you're going to come in and try to overrule them or review every decision they make. Same as if, if the cemetery wants to plant a bush or the HDC wants to put a plaque somewhere. HTC, I think, a few years ago put plaques on several buildings in town or helped. I don't know that they actually expended, but there were. Uh, if you go around town, you'll see several historic markers that were reviewed, I think, at Old Man. Those didn't all come to this table. So in your opinion, the elected body of this city, that the citizens elected, have no say over how the, public's, the public that elected them, the citizens that elected them, they have no say over how their property is used through an elected body. That is all going through an appointed body? If, if you want to equate it to that, uh, are you going to have to call out every time the fire department responds to a fire that the city council has to vote, which hose gets hooked to which uh, fire hydrant in order to put out the fire because you do equate the authority that you have down the line to appointed people, to hired people, to individuals who you trust to do their job. And this body appoints those members of the commission to do their job, to do their function. And you do have the ability to replace them if they are avoiding your deal by, as Mr. Barry said, removing the commission from existence. What do you mean by avoiding our deal? If you truly think that they're running them up, the commission can be put to a stop. You could remove the Parks Commission as an in entity. I think that's excessive in most instances, but if they were simply willy-nilly doing everything they wanted to, that would be an option to look at. But that would have to be done by ordinance, right? And that would yes, it would. You would have to you would have to remove the commission as an existence in body. Is there any case law on this? As far as case law, what what are you looking? As at? far as um, other places having decided that uh, any kind of judgments being made that. The commission does not have sole I priority over managing property under the state statute. I don't know that this has been brought directly, but if you will go to 
nearly any city around here, you will find that most cities have some type of commission or commissions that operate within them, and they operate in a certain amount of autonomy to do certain things. I think if you go to Rogers, you'll find that the Rogers Parks Commission, every time they are going to put up a swing, doesn't come to the Rogers City Council and ask permission to put up a swing. So it's all or nothing is what you're saying? No, but I think that you have the right to draw a line and whether you're, you're uh, and that line that is drawn by the state is whether you're permanently impairing the property by selling it, placing liens on it. Okay. It, it's not whether or not a normal course of business type thing is going on. And to put a monument or a small plaque in a park is not, I think, that out of the ordinary that any court would say that that was really something that, that would not be in the normal course of business. Anybody else? <clears throat> no. So, hypothetical situation. Say that something went horribly wrong and we had a Parks Commission that was uh, not in line with what a lot of people around here might think was proper. And for instance, for instance, if we had a uh, parks commission that wanted to put a statue of Satan, a, or a small plaque of Satan, uh, in one of the parks. Would we have any authority over saying, "Hey, no, you can't do that," or, or under everything that y'all are talking about? Would we just have to say, "Oh well, it's parks; they're autonomous. I guess we have to let the uh, plaque of Satan go in the parks because parks says they want it." So, oh, where's the line? Where, where, where do we draw the line? I'm not going to advocate hey, to tell you to put up a plaque of Satan or not a plaque of Satan in, in the park, but you're now getting into free speech and you're opening a whole new can of worms. My, my point exactly. My well, point exactly. If we allow if we allow some people to have freedom of speech and p place their plaques, then ipso facto we should allow everybody to place their plaques, well, whatever it is that they want. Well, if if you're putting up a plaque in favor of a particular deity or non-deity, however you personally view it, uh, you're probably violating uh, church and state rules also. So you're, you are straying much beyond what you're talking about here. But yes, Am I? you would still have the authority because you established the commissions to take away the commission if you truly think that they're operating not in the best interest of the city. Anybody else? Nothing else, we'll move on. Number nine is a deer hunt. Motion to discuss. I make a motion to discuss the deer hunt. Second. Second. Made and seconded. Floor is open. Okay. It's done, Jeff. Um, we had several people show up tonight. I've had a lot more people talk to me about the deer hunt. And um, I know that I have, citizens have brought me information telling me that the deer hunt could be placed back on the ballot, our upcoming ballot, for a vote of the people. Um, a lot of people say that they're really upset about the deer hunt because what we're getting is not what they what they thought they were going to get. Um, that it's far afield from what they thought they were going to get. And if they had known what it was going to be in the end, they never would have voted for it. They don't feel that um, Game and Fish set the parameters on this hunt, which is what was put in the ordinance that they voted on that the city council put in. Um, and I think these are things that really, you know, need to be addressed. As uh, I didn't make it downstairs to get the list of the property owners, but I've had people call me, uh, and like Jan Grinnell, and say that they, the list of the property owners in Eureka Springs tells them nothing 
since people own property, thank you Butch, since people own property all over town, it doesn't mean that the hunt is going to be at these addresses. And um, some of these people live really close to each other. And so they're wondering, you know, what's going to happen uh, and how they're supposed to know where not to be. Uh, a lot of other people have said that, you know, the dates that we have set up for the for the hunt are excessive, especially because we are a town different than any other town that's having this hunt. The only town, um, Heber Springs is the only town close to us in population, and when I talked to Game and Fish, uh, to Corey, he said that it is not as densely populated as us. They don't depend on uh, visitors coming to visit, and um, so, you know, I've had people say they want it stopped or they at least want the opportunity to vote on it as it has evolved um, with the parameters that the commission or the committee put forward. And, um, and I tend to agree with them because I started asking questions about three meetings ago and really got no answers. Um, and I was asking questions that citizens had sent to me. They weren't questions I was making up. Um, so I guess to make a long story short, I would like to move that we um, I forgot the word. that we absolve, I guess would be the word, uh, Ordinance 2127, that we create a new ordinance and that we get this issue put on the ballot so we know once and for all how people feel about the hunt that has come about, rather than the hunt that they were told on the ballot, which really doesn't tell them anything at all except there's going to be a one-time hunt, period, that's it run by Game and Fish, which it's not being run by them. Yeah, it's my understanding that to do what you're proposing, we would have to uh, negate that ordinance. Order and order. We have a motion on the table. Second. What motion? The motion was to absolve the absolve first the order. Is that the word, Tim? Not, not the one I would use, but what repeal. Would you would use? Repeal. repeal. Excuse me, that's the word I could not remember. Sorry. <laughs> um, was there a second? Yes, Ms. Bowen, second. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Okay. For a discussion on that, on the motion that was made, Mr. Raphael, I think you had a comment. Um, well, it just. From what I was told by the county clerk, that what we need to do is repeal that and then have another ordinance. And all of this done by 4.30 tomorrow. And I can't be in favor of any kind of vague heading at all. That seems to be the number one complaint of people is that it was too vague. I, want, I would like to see everything down to the minuscule description before I could be behind that. Okay. Yeah, we're... <clears throat> Ms. Lamblad introducing something, and she's been against this ordinance. She's been against deer hunting all along. And I just wonder, even if we were able to get something up back up on the balance, repeal this and back up on the balance, and it passes again, if she wouldn't come right back and ask for another ordinance repealing it again, as long as she gets her way. I mean, when do you stop at this? I'm arguing. We're getting into personalities. We're not getting into personalities. We're getting into what ifs. What if the, the other people in this town who are against the deer ordinance come back and say, oh, no, I'm still not happy with it. We're still into this and this and this. The citizens have already voted once. And I'm not getting into this where we, if we have, and Mr. Raphael is correct, we've got to get it done by tomorrow. I'm not sure we can get it all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. And then I'm not even convinced that if we did do that and it went back on the ballot and it got passed, that this still wouldn't come up with people still being against it for some 
for the obvious reasons, they don't want it to hunt inside the city limits. So I'm not really in favor of this at all. I think this is just another method of trying to get around the deer hunt. You had a comment. Um, just some details on what would what the steps would be in order to achieve it and where the information came from, but I'll wait. So whatever you got me to put on this? No. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I'd like to hear from Ms. Armstrong, please. Uh, Rob Hammonds is the Assistant Director of Elections. And he provided information from the Arkansas State Constitution, Article 5, Chapter 7, Dash 11, Dash 205, B, 1 and 2, explaining that the City Council could write an ordinance repealing the original ordinance with your help, preferably, mm -hmm. and a certified copy the body of the ballot and the ballot title at the clerk's office in Berryville by close of business hours tomorrow. So it would be a feat. It is possible. Somebody. Well, I'm sorry that Mr. Barry has to think that this is a personal thing. It's not a personal thing. It's questions that citizens of this city have asked me and sent me that have not been answered. Um, nobody really knew until quite late how long it was going to be. We, you know, citizens are saying they still don't know where it's going to be. Like Miss Grinnell said, uh, there's someone signed up on this list who property backs up to her property children walk through her property she doesn't know you know how does she know she has no idea and um, you know I know that it was announced that people could come to the deer meetings although I know several people that requested to find out when they were and were not told when they were um, but you know my overall feeling is that there are citizens in this town who take this deer hunt very seriously they take public health and safety very seriously, and they would like to be able to vote on what the deer hunt actually is, not what it was represented to be, which was so vague on the ballot that who knew what it was going to be. And on the ballot it says, promulgated and time set by the Arkansas Game and Fish. They have not set the times on this. They haven't set the times. So, you know, that's what they thought. Game and Fish was going to run this, not a citizen committee of Eureka Springs. And so now that it's all laid out what this hunt's going to be, they want the right to be able to decide if we're going to have the hunt or not. And that's all it is for me. It's not any big personal agenda. I'm not going to keep bringing it back and bringing it back. It's not a witch hunt. It's not something that my ego is connected to. It's that people keep contacting me and saying, we don't know where it's going to be. We didn't know it was going to be this long. I've had business owners call me and say, I've got a bed and breakfast. You know, I have people coming all through November and December. My In my own shop, I talked to a man from Oklahoma who is a hunter who comes here four and five times a year that said he has, you know, I'm a hunter, but he said, frankly, when I stay in a b and I do not want a deer running through the yard with an arrow. And, you know, Mr. Barry talks about getting into what ifs. That's what I was accused of when I asked the questions that the citizens sent me in the beginning. So, you know, that's all I have to say. I think that... The citizens want a chance to vote on this and vote on it as it exists now. And that's something they've never had a chance to vote on. I would like to just briefly respond to Ms. Lindblad's comment a moment ago about the vagaries of this particular ordinance. There was a procedure, there is a procedure, any time a matter like this goes to a vote of the people that can be followed if a ballot title is believed to be vague or if the parties involved do not understand the ballot title. 
for challenging me. If you are watching the state right now, there's one of those going on in regard to uh, casinos within certain parts of the state. That